Right, let's go ahead and jump in. If you're looking at Psalm 55 uh, on your own Bible or uh, maybe, uh, maybe if you're watching the feed on your phone, maybe you've got another a computer or something like that, you can look it up. Psalm 55. This, if I were to give this psalm a subtitle, it would be what uh, you kind of saw at the top of the live feed today. It's a psalm for the betrayed. Um, and you might think, well, I, I don't know that that really applies to me. Uh, betrayal is like a, man, this, that's a big word. That's a word for the movies. Um, I've been betrayed. Um, but I'll tell you what, it's actually a feeling I think that we experience more often than we think we do. It's, a, it's an experience that we have more often in our everyday lives than, than I think we're really um, considering. And so uh, this psalm may just be for you today. So I'm going to go ahead and read it uh, all the way through. And then we're going to break it down um, section, kind of section by section today. It's not verse by verse because it's a little bit of a longer psalm. It's 23 verses. So here we go. Read with me. Psalm 55 is the word of the Lord. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I'm distraught because of what my enemy is saying, because of the threats of the wicked, for they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and troubling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that the wings of a dove, oh, that I had the wings of a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. Lord, confuse the wicked, confound their words, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they prowl on its walls. Malice and abuse are within it. Destructive forces are at work in the city. Threats and lies never leave its streets. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide, but it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God as we walked about among the worshipers. Let death take my enemies by surprise. Let them go down alive to the realm of the dead, for evil finds lodging among them. As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He rescues me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. God, who is enthroned from old, who does not change, he will hear them and humble them because they have no fear of God. My companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. He, his talk is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. But you, God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of decay. The bloodthirsty and deceitful will not live out half their days. But as for me, I trust in you. This is the word of the Lord out of Psalm 55 this morning. This I would call a psalm for the betrayed. And again, you might think when you hear that word, that's kind of a word for the movies. Like, oh man, this person has betrayed me. You know, this, this big thing. But in reality, I think we encounter this feeling more often than we think we do in our everyday relationships. And really, all this is, is betrayal is very simply unexpected contempt from an unexpected source. I'll say that again. I think it's just, it's unexpected contempt from an unexpected source. And this may happen in a lot of different ways for us, for me, for you. I know that I've experienced it. I experience it um, from time to time. Uh, maybe it's through social media that you've experienced this. Uh, malicious political comment or some comment on a post that you wrote that you didn't think, man, I didn't think this person was going to write that. Like, I thought that they were kind of in agreement with me. I thought they were on my side. Uh, and then maybe subsequently they kind of ignore what you write and send and maybe text messages don't go, uh, re, uh, they, they don't go uh, responded to very quickly anymore. 
Uh, maybe it's public avoidance. I know that we haven't been in public with each other for a little while, but you can uh, remember a time where you had a friend, maybe in the church, who was a friend for a long time, and then things started to fall apart, and then all of a sudden you noticed that they started avoiding you when you would go to church and you would kind of make your way around them. They would avoid you publicly. That is a discouraging thing, and it could be someone that you worked closely with. It could be someone who uh, was a friend, and now they frustrate your path, and, and, and they, they bring you uh, discouragement and frustration, and you're confused as to why. This is what this feeling is like. It could be in your family uh, that you could have a sibling who says hurtful things to you uh, when you would normally have expected love and support. And this is particularly, I think, a painful one for us because, again, it's unexpected contempt from an unexpected source. You expected them to support you and to love you, and you got kind of the opposite of that. This is what betrayal is. This is what the person in this psalm is feeling. This is what has happened to them. Could be a classmate who talks behind your back or mocks you in public. Uh, when you thought that you had a certain kind of relationship with them. It could be a broken confidence. You shared something, you shared some kind of uh, bad news or discouraging thing or, or something that's very personal with somebody and you expected them to keep your confidence and they broke it. They shared your bad news, uh, something that wasn't them, uh, something that wasn't theirs to share. They, they revealed your secret. Uh, it could be a judgmental attitude that somebody has towards you when you expected um, them to kind of treat you with kindness in the midst of a failure of yours. Uh, you had a friend that instead of responding with mercy and understanding, they respond with a judgmental attitude and with contempt. Uh, it could be a critical spirit. A friend just has a critical spirit with you. They're not encouraging. They're consistently critical. There's a difference between being critical and critiquing, by the way. Critiquing is a positive way of doing it. Being critical is a very negative way of doing it. It could be any of these things. Somebody slanders you. Somebody talks badly about you. But you've experienced, no doubt, you've experienced this feeling before. And again, it's profoundly painful because it's unexpected contempt from an unexpected source you are able to deal better with someone's negative, um, someone's negative communication towards you and someone's uh, negative feelings towards you if it's someone that you kind of expected that from. But in the psalm, we find that this isn't the case. If you look back in the psalm, in Psalm 55, verse 12, we get the behind the scenes, the, psalm, the psalmist kind of pulls the curtain back on what's happening here. And he says, if an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If it were an enemy, I'd have no problem with this. If it were a foe rising against me, I could hide. I could, I could pull off whatever it is that I normally pull off when this happens. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God. This is somebody who once was a close faith companion. Have you ever experienced this before? Somebody that you maybe once went to church with, you were once close with them, and something happened, and they now are frustrating your path. They now are talking badly about you. They now are responding badly to you when you reach out to them. It is a feeling of betrayal. They've broken your confidence. They've done any of these things, but it was once a close friend, not just a close friend, but somebody who's a close friend in the faith. This happens all the time in Christianity. This happens all the time between Christians, and it's a tragedy, but it does. With whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God as we walked about among the worshipers. You can imagine this person if they were alive today describing the scenario. They're, they close their eyes and, and they can see kind of the, the church auditorium and maybe the church lobby and the places that they would normally frequent in those areas and the places that they would see or the places they'd be in and the people they'd run into. And now it's fundamentally different because this relationship is not what it once was. And now, sometimes it gets even further than that. If you look at verse 20, it says, my companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. 
His talk is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, and yet they are drawn swords. Sometimes betrayal is very well hidden. It's difficult to pick up on, and yet we sense that something isn't right. And so this here's the one thing that I want to give you this morning. If you've experienced this before, maybe you're experiencing it now. Um, I know that I have. Uh, being a leader in ministry, it's kind of an occupational hazard that at some point in time, you will do or say something that somebody close to you is not going to like, they're not going to appreciate, and they're going to turn on you. This is going to happen as you follow Jesus, by the way. As you follow Jesus and you have maybe close friends who are coworkers or even people within the church, as you follow Christ and you long to do what's right based on what you find in Scripture, inevitably there are going to be moments of truth. There are going to be crossroads where you follow the path that the Lord would have you follow. And because of that action, it's something that your friend does not appreciate. Maybe their faith is not as quite in the same maturity area that yours is and they don't appreciate it and they turn on you. And here's the question, how do you handle it? Because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. People are gonna disappoint you for sure, but people are going to betray you from time to time. Here is what we need to do. It's in verse 22 of Psalm 55. Okay, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. I'm gonna read that verse one more time. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. A couple of things as we break that verse down. First off, I want you to notice that it doesn't say that if you cast your cares upon the Lord, that he will never allow you to feel something like betrayal. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that if you cast your cares on the Lord, that he will protect you and insulate you from ever having anybody turn on you. It doesn't say that if you cast your cares upon the Lord, that he will only surround you with the most wonderful people on earth and you'll never endure anything like this. It doesn't say that. It says he will sustain you. And sustaining here, the sustenance, is in the midst of whatever it is that you need to walk through relationally. This person's walking through betrayal, and yet God is sustaining them. This has a couple of different effects. Number one, it helps you discern between feelings of betrayal that are true, it's a true betrayal, and other types of just disappointment, negative feelings with friends that are close to you, people that disappoint you in different ways because it's different. And when you are relying on the Lord for your, for your relational sustenance, then you're better able to kind of parse this out. And here's what I mean. Betrayal is the things that I listed before, uh, public avoidance, um, talking, uh, malicious talking behind your back, mockery, uh, slander, uh, critical spirit, a judgmental attitude when you anticipated grace and mercy. Those things are betrayal. But sometimes friends just disagree with you. That's not betrayal. But when you are seeing relationships correctly because you are trusting in the Lord to sustain you, then you'll better be able to handle it. You get, well, I just have a friend who's disagreeing with me. I don't necessarily have somebody who's betraying me. But sometimes if we are relying on our relationships around us to be the sustaining power for us, if that's what we're doing, then I'm, I'm trusting, I need my friendships to be what sustain me spiritually and give me joy and peace. If that's what I'm doing, then when my friend just disagrees with me, it's gonna feel like a betrayal and it's not a betrayal. It's also not when I'm just uninvited to something. Sometimes my friends, again, if I'm, if I'm trusting in them for my, for my sustenance, my relational sustaining, meaning that uh, these are the people who make me uh, feel like I uh, matter. These are the people who give me significance. These are the people who uh, give me love. If, if that is the only place I'm getting it from, my earthly relationships, then when I am uninvited to something, a gathering of friends that I kind of go unnoticed, it could be absolutely nothing, but I'm going to interpret it as a betrayal and I'm gonna respond that way because I'm not responding to my relationships in a healthy way. 
that's another effect that this has. Also, when, again, when I'm trusting in my earthly friendships to provide that sustenance that I need of love and significance and security, where I should be getting it from the Lord alone, then when a friend just tells me the truth, and maybe it's truth I don't want to hear, I'm going to feel like they're betraying me. And they're not. That's not betrayal. Uh, it's not betrayal when a friend just disappoints you. It's not betrayal when a friend tells you the truth you didn't want to hear. It's not betrayal when they disagree with you. And it's not betrayal when they don't invite you into whatever it is that they're doing. But we don't have a good gauge for this unless we're doing what the psalm says in verse 22, where it says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. That's the key word here. He will sustain you. This is relational health right here. If I am becoming a person every day who is sustained by the Lord, means I'm looking to him primarily for the love that I need every day. I go to him in the morning so that I feel loved the entire day and I'm not needing my friendships or the family members that are in my house or anybody to make me feel loved. And therefore, when those relationships disappoint me, and they will, or even when a friend, God forbid, actually does betray me, this is how I'll be able to respond. As for me, I trust in God. As for me, I trust in God. And then when God gives you a command like love your enemies, when he gives you a command like pray for those who persecute you, you can insert the word betray there, pray for those who betray you. When that happens, you're much more able to do it because you are trusting in God to sustain you relationally. Your relationships will disappoint you. They will. And some will fail you. And some friends, some close friends in the faith will betray you at times. You know why? It's because we're all sinners and we're all broken. And here's another thing. You might not want to hear this, but you will disappoint your friends too. You will disappoint your family members. You will hurt your friends. You will hurt your family members. You may even betray a close Christian friend at some point in time in your life because you're a sinner too. But this is the relational orientation that we all need. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. So that's what I'm challenging you with today. Go to God today and pray that verse from Psalm 55 and pray it like this. Lord, help me cast my cares on you and to trust in you to sustain me so that I don't need anybody else to sustain me. I'm trusting in you to sustain me so I don't need anybody else to sustain me. This is what we need to do. And when we do this and we have this kind of relational health, I believe that when the disappointments come, when the betrayals come, when all of that happens, we are going to be much better able to weather it. And God's the one sustaining us through all of those relational ups and downs. So here's my prayer for you today. If you have experienced a betrayal, a particularly close betrayal with somebody who believes what you believe, where you expected support and love and you got instead contempt or judgment or something else, my prayer for you is that God would heal your heart. That as you cast your cares on him, he would show you how much he cares for you. And in the midst of that, that he would show you that he's the one who sustains you. That you don't need all those other friendships to sustain you. You can then go to him for the sustenance and then turn around and you can love those who betray you. You can serve those who cause you harm and you can build up other people in friendship without needing them to be the one that sustains you with love and support and security. That's my prayer for you today, but it only happens if you every day go to the Lord and say, you need to be the one who sustains me. Be the one who sustains me today. So that's the challenge from Psalm 55 today. Guys, it's been a wonderful uh, experience. It's been a wonderful few weeks jumping into the Psalms with you. Next Thursday morning, 920, we're going to get together right here again for another devotional, but we're going to take a break from the Psalms. We're going to do another series. We're going to jump somewhere else in Scripture, but we're going to do the same thing. We're going to read through a passage, break it down, talk about what it has to say for our lives this day. Guys, I love you. I miss you. I hope that you're doing well. May God uh, turn his face towards you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace this day. Friends, be blessed.